Welcome to Alataki TV. I'm Donnell. And I'm Helen. And oh my gosh, guys, it's the last day of the term. Yeah. Aren't you all excited? I hope you guys learned in all those assignments, because I know I did. He's lying, guys. Well, anyways, so many things have happened during the last two weeks of the term. Let's check out what's coming up on Aratahi TV today. Check it out Level 1's contemporary dance performance, where they bust out their sweet moves on the dance floor. Can you speak emoji? Our students can answer that as they're put in the hot seat. We catch up with an ex-student, now famous rugby player, Marata Nuikore. Search him up. But first, let's hear a few words from our principal before the term ends. Kia ora koutou. Well, we finally got to the end of term and we all uh, very much deserve this holiday that we've got in front of us. It has been a very difficult term. Large numbers of us have been away, myself included, with COVID, and it has been um, difficult in a lot of ways to keep going and to keep focusing on the work that we've got ahead of us. However, that is our challenge, and the holidays have come at a great time because it means that you, can, you have a bit of space now to catch up on any work that you've got behind in. This is very important because NCQA have told us that this year there aren't going to be any special conditions because of COVID, which means that students need to complete all their work and uh, do the best to accumulate the credits that they need in order to get their NCEA this year. I'd just like to talk about the positives of this term for a moment. Um, the number one positive is the number of students that have returned to school when our attendance is now sitting between 75 and 78 percent which is great however um, our focus for next term is going to be getting that attendance up to 90 percent because what we know about attendance is if you're at school and you're attending you are very likely to be successful in your academic achievement. There's been a really settled tone to the school, despite the fact that so many people have been away, and that has been great to see. I've been in many classrooms, and I've seen you at work, and you're working in a very settled and focused way, and I commend you for that. Um, and it's also been good to see students finally getting to do the sort of stuff that students do at school, uh, and re-engaging with sport and cultural activities. I think that... Um, Next term, uh, with the winter sports coming about, I think you'll be able to get back into your normal school groove. A couple of things that I would like to see improved for next term, and the two main ones uh, that are bothering uh, the teachers and the senior leaders in the school, one is the vandalism in the toilets, which has to stop. Too much money is being spent on cleaning up uh, student vandalism, and this is just a waste of money because it's money that doesn't get spent on student learning or student opportunities such as sport. Another area where I think students really need to focus is on the use of social media. Um, too many incidents of people running their mouths off on social media uh, and then that ends up being uh, some sort of disturbance or fight at school, and this has got to stop. So apart from those two areas of focus, I'm really pleased with the way that the term has gone this year so far, and I uh, wish you all a really good holiday, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you back here next term, ready to go and work hard. Nga mihi. Thanks, Mrs. Webb, for your encouraging words. I'm sure all of our students will enjoy their well-deserved break. Now, have you ever wondered what our teachers here at AO are listening to? Me neither. But Joseph answers that question anyway. Here comes What Are You Listening To? Teacher Edition. Oh, yeah. uh, we're here with Mr. Talbot. Sir, after a long, long day at school, dealing with annoying students. What is the song that you put on repeat? Tough call. Uh, there's a few, but uh, probably the one I'd uh, jam at the moment would be uh, Ice Cube. Today was a good day. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. Oh, 
We're here with four lovely ladies, four lovely <laughs> teachers. Hi, Demos. What is the top song that you have on repeat? Oh, Wycliffe John, Pussycat, Pussycat. Pussycat, Pussycat, I love you. Yes, I do. What about you, Miss? Uh, don't forget your oats. Don't forget your oats, my friend. <laughs> and me, mine's OPP from Naughty by Nature. Oh. Mare Kura by the Modern Māori Quartet. Well, Miss Wallace, one of the English department teachers. Hi there, Miss Wallace. Hi, Joseph. Um, after a long, long day at school, and when you get home, feeling nice and relaxed, what is the song that you like to play? Um, I usually like to jam lots of stuff in the class, so this would be one of them. We can start the fire. A good variety of songs, but I would say um, Anyone by Seventeen. But sadly to say, this is going to be the last time you're going to be seeing me from What Are You Listening To? We're going to be moving to TikTok, so if you want more content like this, see you there. Wow, great taste, Miss Wallace. My dad loves those songs. <laughs> well, anyways, let's see some of our Samoan speech contestants to see how it went. Ayo kele la sia le vai ngai fusi lo ngai kapi sai kamo kanga lo lo sa. Salo falawa. My name is Simon. What's up, Paul? Full Samoan. Um, I'm in the South PN at the moment. Emo mo ngau fa kulo kulo ngalabo. I was basically um presenting out of the college in the year 12 Samoan speech competition. So my speech was about the effects of Samoan culture because of the technologies and internet. You know, the teenagers nowadays. <coughs> They use uh, the technologies as a way of you know, doing bad stuff on social medias and stuff, whichever ways that affect our culture. Ole ase mo itai na le vai a fe mo so so wina le pai a tele mo mo malu malu mo sa mo fe ngau le ne yasu. Hello, everyone. My name is Rita, and I'm year 13 at Aotearoa College. I represented the year 13 for Aotearoa at the speech competition that was held in Manukau. Ole se so ai pai a fe ngai ngo. I first I was nervous and then halfway through the speech I was old. Because we weren't allowed to use key cards and stuff, we had to learn it off by heart in a week time. And I said that I will show me. My topic was about how the teenagers now would carry on the Samoan language and how they would use it in the future. I was very happy to be here. I was very happy to be here. I was very My name is Boyd Afu. I'm a full Samoan. 18 years of age. How I feel like uh, I was kind of nervous at first, but when like we all stand up on the stage, yeah, you know, just uh, feel good. You know, it's good to be uh, same the school and uh, also for our culture. I o te ria sa inal va mau pe o te moli la o fonga mo mo o na o fatulo. Yes, for me it's important like the, our culture. We should stick together. Like we should know and remember where we came from. Or, Okay, I okay, le ka inga le la fully pe ka fisi le la uka makama pe upe file ku avau. Talo falawa. My name is Livingston. Um, I'm from Samoa. My speech was about the youth, new generation, with the future of our language. Elua ni va enga wo va va. For me to keep our language like alive, cause a lot of students that. They they from Samoa, they from Samoa, but now they want to speak like one language. Well, thank you to Ms. Tafu for this opportunity that we got to do this. Thank you for everyone, uh, especially on the college, our dear college, for the opportunity for me to be in our school and our culture. Thank our dear college for this opportunity that they gave it to me to represent my culture. I also like to thank our parents and families and friends. Like for their support. I'd like to say thank you for our school, for their support. To the youth out there, don't be ashamed of who you are, remember your culture and where you come from. Far for Thai for sharing that with us. In our next segment, we take a look at Kainga, where we learn about health and well being. There are many unique departments in our school that are vital to our learning, and today's focus is no different. This episode will cover the importance of Kainga, as well as some of the fun activities these classes partake in. Oh, kia ora. Um, I'm Tani Kamiangato and I'm one of the Deputy Principals here at Aorere College. Um, my role this year in particular is working with our Māori students. Kia ora, my name is um, Chris Matthews and I am 
um, responsible for achievement and engagement in the junior school. Kai Inga refers, can refer to home, it can refer to um, family, kin, family. kin, yeah, family. Basically it's, it's a place where the students belong, where they feel comfortable, where they feel at home. Um, I think if you can recall that we have academic, have had academic mentoring over the last few years, but we changed it in 2021, um, sort of allotted to or allocated to making sure that when our um, rangatahi comes back to school that there's sufficient time for us to be present for them so that they can have that one adult that one significant adult that is present for students. I'm sure if I ask you um, who was that one significant adult that was present for you, then you could probably go back and maybe list a few. And that's what we wanted to create through the Kainga program. It, it enables um, teachers to be able to do those everyday things that we need to do, like checking attendance, um, checking pastoral, those types of things, but also it just allows them time to build a relationship with their um, yeah, with their kainga class. The theme for this term was Fanongatanga. So for example, they've looked at this year, it was identity, who am I? That's mm. a, it's a key component of Fanongatanga. Before I can be part of a bigger group, I need to know who I am. So no, no one kainga will look the same as another? It shouldn't. Yeah. Because of, it because should of be the... specific to yeah. their class. Yeah. So we have the general ideas, and that, that is what um, Chris mentioned about teachers getting together, so the kainga kaiako every Wednesday having a meeting. One thing that we will continue to do throughout the year is, is the academic tracking and um, also the goal setting. Yeah, something else that we do with our whānau classes is on a Thursday period three, um, we, we have all the whānau classes together, so they come in um, we, for a whānau hui um, and we do waiata, we do haka um, and we also do um, certificates because um, often there's a lot of focus on what students maybe aren't doing right. Um, we're trying to really just spotlight and highlight the one, things that students are doing right. 1600 kids, students plus, and there are a lot of good stuff happening. Now how is that for a class? You know, in our kind of class, we prepare cool segments to bring our show to life. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for my next kind of class. But you know what I can't wait for, Helen? What? I can't wait to learn more about Vaisaki. Vaisaki is celebrated by Sikhs all over the world. It usually falls on 13th or 14th of April. So Vaisaki has two significance. Um, it is the Sikh New Year and the Hindus and Punjabis celebrate this time of the year because it's significant in the sense that it is the harvest festival. So the farmers normally harvest their crop and they celebrate that. Um, but Vesaki also coincides with a major Sikh religious festival and it is actually the birth of the Khalsa. So I remember when I was a little girl, my parents would be very excited that Vesaki is coming and I know I would get a new Punjabi suit. This is what, sort of what I'm wearing right now. And I would look forward to Vesaki because of that. We would have this three day, 48 hour uh, prayer session in the Gurdwaras, which is the Sikh temple. And of course, you're not awake for 48 hours, but you just go in the daytime and you do a lot of seva. So seva means um, community work. So for the three days, there's breakfast, lunch and dinner provided by, for whoever who comes to the temple. And they can come and they can uh, you know, pay their respects and have a great meal. Someone has to cook those meals, right? So I remember when I was young, we used to go there and chop vegetables and there were different stations. You either chop the carrots or the potatoes or you did some sort of work and if you're not helping in cooking then you're helping in doing the dishes and if you're not doing that then you're just doing some cleaning around the temple and then sometimes you go upstairs and listen to the recitation of the prayers and on the final day you will have hymn singing and everybody will join their hands together in a prayer and that's what it was so it was more of a festival where we went to the Gurdwara and of course sometimes when you come back home and people will have like this mini parties like Eid and we would like you know share food. Vasaki to me is a, a day of celebration and a lot of shopping so what we basically do is I wear new clothes, we go to Sikh temple, we uh, sit there and pray for a beautiful year and then we go to Langar Hall, we eat and we enjoy. Happy Vasaki! 
What a lovely Sikh celebration. Let's hope for another fruitful year. Hmm. Now, let's dash over to Janisha as she gives us updates on the latest news. Welcome back to News in the Flesh. The government has announced that young people aged 16 to 17 can now receive their booster shot six months after their primary course. Those aged 18 and over can receive their booster shot three months after their second dose. The Ukrainian government has asked New Zealand for military assistance, however, cabinet has declined so far. Ashley Bloomfield has announced he will be stepping down as Director of General Health. A recent climate change report has shown that we are on track for the worst case scenario of climate change. Auckland Transport has announced that they are running out of money to run buses, ferries and trains. Year 13s now have something to look forward to with two major upcoming events, Bull and Lever's Dinner. Dates are yet to be confirmed. That's it for now and catch me next time on News in a Flash. As fast as always, Denisa. In the last episode, we got to see a close-up of how our front reception works. But what is it like in the life of a caretaker? We find out now. Today's focus is the backbone of Aotearoa College is our caretakers. We will be learning about their daily roles and responsibilities and what they do to look after our school environment. Hi, my name is Wally Pedersen. I've been at the school here for four and a half years now. Andrew Dodd, I've just coming up to my first year. I've lived in Papatoe now for 10 years. My wife found the job as a caretaker for Aotearoa College. She got me into it. I came to New Zealand three years ago from England. Before I left the UK, I was a landscape gardener, which is why I started working here and got the job here doing the grounds. Marking the fields and cleaning up all the rubbish. We have Isla, we have Donnie. Typical day would be uh, just before seven o'clock, opening all the gates, that nothing's gone amiss or anything's happened overnight. And then after that, it's normally varies. So I arrive first thing in the morning, and then I go through my iPad and start sorting out what jobs I've got to do for what classes have come in saying they need uh, either equipment or something fixed. The, it's trying sometimes with the students. I love it's vandalism. Oh. <laughs> I think it's frustrating to our job fixing the same thing all the time. Um, the job does get demanding sometimes, but it's a challenge all the time which keeps my mind active and. That's why I think I enjoy being here. I like, I like the diversity of it. It's one day is always different to the next. It's very good because I'm mixing with a lot of different people here with the students as well as teachers and support staff. Stop dropping litter. That'd be a good one. Then they'll do us out of a job, one part of a job. <laughs> yeah. I just generally like doing what I'm doing, really. I like my staff, I love my job. <laughs> I've really enjoyed it here, it's probably one of the better jobs I've ever had. We're so lucky to have our caretakers. Remember to help out wherever you can, it's the least we can do. It's so good to see our sport season starting up again. Let's head over to our sport presenter, Tale. What's up Adele, Tala here and this is your school sports updates. Our volleyball team went to Auckland Champs last week, our girls placing 9th and our boys placing 5th. Going over to TAG, our senior boys 18 placed 4th in their grade, our senior girls have placed 2nd in their grade and our senior boys B team placed 1st coming in with a whopping 5 win streak. For the 5th time in a row, our school has won the secondary school of the year for Counties Monica. That's it for today. Tune in next time when we bring more school sports updates. Thanks, Tale, for the update on sport. Now it's time to tackle alumni catch-up with Leo and our alumni, Marata. Well, my name is Leo. Um, I'm the producer of our TV show. Yeah, I watch a lot of leagues, so I was excited to come do this interview. <laughs> nah, thanks for having me, bro. Pleasure of being on here, so. Yeah, uh, before we get into the interview, I'd like to congratulate you guys on your win in the weekend against Storm. That was a tough one. I left it too late, eh? Yeah, nah, that was, that was a really good try. I was uh, edge of my seat. <laughs> nah, yeah. I thought the boys were going to close it off before um, Golden Point, but obviously it wasn't, 
wasn't meant to be, and um, one of the boys pulled up with you know a miracle play at the end and happened to do his ACL at the same time. So pretty unfortunate, but um, you know the boys got the win. Yeah, but hopefully you guys pull away with the win this year. Yeah, I think all those guys um, have played a massive part into um, what we've achieved the last couple of years, and you know there's a time to be winning some footy to be you know this year, and um, you know the clubs in some good hands in the following after that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what's it like living in Australia? It's different. Um, I've gotten used to the way being an Australian now. Um, I've been here six years coming up this year and um, I've got the opportunity to come here and do what I love doing and also to provide for my family. And I've got two kids now who have both been born here. So um, it's a place that I'll hold dearly close to me um, in the following years to come. Yeah, nah. Six years is a very long time, man. Yeah. <laughs> but who would have thought? Kid from South Auckland moved to the big city of Sydney and, you know, get to do what I do. So six years is, you know, it's long, but it's gone by pretty quick in, in terms of, you know, what I've achieved over that period. Yeah, I'm sure um, everyone's dying to know, what's it like being a professional rugby league player? Um, a lot of hard work, eh, to be honest. Um, I think everyone gets to see um, you know, what we do on TV, but there's a lot of um, training that happens behind the scenes and a lot of sacrifices, so we get to put on on show for you guys on the weekends. What club did you play for back over here? So all my junior footy was um, at Mangere East Hawks. Uh, yeah. I played all my junior footy there, and then I spent one year um, while I was my last year in high school. I spent that last year in, um, at Hell Hornets. Yeah, just thought I'd test myself elsewhere and, you know, got to play Fox that year and, um, you know, that set, set me a pathway to, to where I am now, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, is that a cookie jersey behind you? <laughs> yeah, so 2017, I'm um, with SPNG, so that was my first test for the Cook Islands. Yeah, it's a jersey that I hold um, close to me and, you know, that's probably the reason why it's framed. Yes, it was just my way of giving back to my family and my parents, especially the way, you know, they were brought, brought up in the island. So it was just my way of giving back to them. Um, how was your time here out of there? No, it was actually pretty good, to be honest. I um, wasn't, you know, your smartest kid, but, you know, I was just an active kid, to be honest. Um, I was always the kid that um, rocked up to school at seven o'clock, um, you know, wanting to play rugby with all the boys before, you know, class started. So yeah. just loved my time there. I think if I didn't, um, go through those stages um, at Aldera, you know, I probably um, wouldn't be where I am today. Nah, yeah, totally. School's a major part of your life. You spent a lot of years on it, eh? Yeah, well, the, that's pretty much where I played most of my league. Or like when I started to play league was when I came through AU. So, you know, um, I was I played first 15 for year 9 and 10, but then just like all the boys that I hung around with, they all you know, played rugby league, so that's probably why I went down that down the alley and led me to where I am today. Yeah, you're really successful now, eh? Still got, yeah. a, lot, still got a lot to achieve at the moment, and you yeah. know, I've got a few boxes I need to tick before, you know, the time comes to an end. Speaking of boxes, I heard that you've been signed by the Warriors, coming back home. How does it make you feel? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. It's a... You know, I played all my under-20s at the Warriors and it was a club that played a lot of my footy at, but that wasn't meant to be. And, you know, I had to come over to Para to fulfil my childhood dream. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to coming back. Um, do you have any advice for any students uh, trying to pursue a career in professional sport? I think just being focused. I think if you know what you want to do and um, put your full focus and your attention to that, to that goal and... Hard work is always um, is what gets you to all these places, and yeah, I think you got to make sacrifices along the way as well. So um, at some stage, you'll be met at the crossroads of um, all these decisions that you're going to have to make, and I think just focusing on on those goals and then um, you know just achieving them along the way. That's all the questions I got. Um, thanks for having us, uh, having me interview you and being on our show. Nah, thanks for having me, bro. It was, a, it was, it was a, a privilege being on here and, you know, to see how far the school's come and, you know, having the, all these interviews and that, you know, wasn't around when I was there. Wow, it's amazing to see how far students can go, even across the ditch to achieve their dreams. Student of the month, now we get to reveal who the lucky students are. And I bet I'm one of them. 
Kia ora. The student of the month shows high levels of engagement in science, always asking interesting questions, thinking deeply about the content and trying to apply it. The Year 9 student of the month for February is Matty J Manuel from 9WK. The teachers of this student are impressed with his attitude, good manners to all students and staff. This student has been described as an excellent role model for the class. His leadership qualities are exemplary and always binds the class together. I have great pleasure in announcing the student of the month for year 10, February, is Carlin Kimmy from 10WG. The year 11 student of the month is described as being a great student who follows instruction, works well with others and is always ready to help out. The Year 11 Student of the Month for February is from 11ML and this is Michelle Havoc. Kia ora, the Year 12 Student of the Month for February is a new student to our school. They are really respectful, develop positive relationships with students and staff. The Year 12 Student of the Month for February is Boyd R. Hook. The Year 13 Student of the Month for February has shown consistency and self-determination, two qualities which have become very important during these times. I am happy to announce that the Year 13 Student of the Month for February is Salvation Fatawi Lafonga. This Student of the Month is an active participant and always adds value during class discussion. He has maintained a great attitude towards his learning while being in isolation. The Year 9 Student of the Month for March is Moranai Tangi from 9TM. This student has had 100% attendance so far and has pleased all his subject teachers with his manners. The Year 10 Student of the Month for the month of March is Detroit Collins from 10 Fano class. The Year 11 Student of the Month shows fantastic ownership for their learning. He has been working with a couple of others in his science class and really shows some great leadership. The Year 11 Student of the Month for March is Antonio Alcusor from 11FJ. The Year 12 Student of the Month for March is a student who is really positive, is really helpful, uh, contributes a lot in class and has had amazing attendance even though the start of the year has been really disruptive. The Year 12 Student of the Month for March is Kiriyama Williams. The Year 13 Student of the Month for March has had this set about her in her nominations. This student brings a smile to my face every time and her pleasant personality always makes my day. Long may she continue to bring smiles to the faces of the people around her. The Year 13 Student of the Month for March is Aria Solia Sao. Congrats to those hardworking Ako who got their special acknowledgement, even though they missed someone. Don't worry, Donna, you'll get it next time. <laughs> Now, let's move on to a dance performance by our level ones combining spoken word and movement. Roll the clip. Kia ora. Uh, today we were filming our dance assessments for level one dance. We have tried something new this year and we have adapted a spoken word assessment within our dance choreography and performance assessments. So students will actually get uh, two different uh, assessment uh, credits for this performance. Um, we decided to do this because it creates more depth within their choreography. They were actually writing their own spoken word pieces whilst choreographing to them and then performing them. Um, so dancing and speaking at the same time, which is actually quite a challenge um, if you want to give it a go. Um, the other element of this assessment that we trialled this term as well is a collaboration with a different school. So we were actually collaborating with Rose Hill College and we were sending our videos uh, during rehearsals to them and they would send some of theirs to us and offering critique and suggestions on how to improve. All this will be leading into our 
massive project that we have over the next two terms with Russell College, uh, which will then end in a showcase of, uh, with the two schools coming together. So here are the performances and I really hope you enjoy them or take away something special or a special moment um, that relates to you. People think I'm a river that flows gracefully but they don't understand my hidden currents. They don't understand where my rapids that can overpower someone and push them to death come from. But that doesn't mean I'm not friendly I will be there for you when you need help. Every day calls for an explanation on why my face remains unchanged, why I look like an angry bird. But no matter how hard I try to be that girl that giggles at everything, or that girl that interacts with everyone, their opinion on me doesn't change. Now you see, this is who I am. What about you? Who are you? I am an island dog. A very suitable word close to my existing life. For some, a line of attitude and step guide to act for every presence. I can just smell the essence of your saliva slowly devouring the surface of your tongue. Moving away from your esophagus, waiting for its release. I swear you've spoken almost every word from the dictionary where racism and oppression ceases to exist. You consist to dismiss these issues. Just the loss of interest. This isn't meant to be a bedtime story or soft-spoken poetry with rhythm. You continue to damage my people like a broken record and yet you expect us to play the melodies your way. I am an obscure emotion buried with the memories of my hippocampus. My sorrows and regrets are tied together and it's thick layers of tissue. As memories flash before my eyes, everything is tossed aside. The remorse and strain that has built up inside me seems as heavy as death's clutches. Your expectations are not our identity. Wow, what a thought-provoking performance. Now it's time for Guess That, that Movie! Guess the movie. Yo. Oh, it's a flower in the boat. No idea. I'm gonna go on a cruise with my wife there. Oh, is that movie the big one? Um, Titanic. Ah, uh, Titanic. Spider-Man. Spider um, Spider-Man, no way home. Oh, which oh, Spider-Man? I'm Spider coming. Um, no way home. No way home. No way home. What's that? I don't even know what's that. What does it look like? Waves. <laughs> Tsunami. Oh. What's that? What's Meg. The rock movie. I suck at this. Waves. Cloud. Waves <laughs> 2. Ocean. Oh. Ocean. Ocean. How many? How many is there? Ocean 7. Ocean. Waves. What? Wave. Ocean. Ocean 8. Ocean something. Yo, can we move on to the next one? I like, can we actually move on to the next one? Yeah, just, just move on, just move on. Let's just ignore that. Good no, luck. What? No, um, go. Cinderella. Oh, no. Oh, sleeping baby. <laughs> no, it's very. Um. Wait, what is Cinderella. it? Cinderella. No, it's not Cinderella. It's blue. Pass. My wife looks like a princess now, and I will pass the flower on to her. Uh, wait, it's... 
what's that what's that movie with like with the bear uh, with, like the, the monster and then the princess Beauty and the Beast is that Pip? no that's not Peppa Pig hold on Alice in Wonderland no <laughs> that's a chicken there oh nah I don't know Moana <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the chicken water. Chicken little. It's an easy one. Easy one, you reckon? Um, Wait, everyone gets this one. Uh, next. Sushi. <laughs> um, money sushi. Giving sushi. Japan. Crazy rich Asians. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm so lost. Crazy money sushi. Oh, you're close, you're close. Oh, crazy money. Asian. Oh, wait. Oh, oh crazy Asian. Asian. Oh, no, um, yeah, you... Crazy rich Asians. No, yeah. Smoke sexy, man. Ah, uh, that. Dollars? Yeah, I need dollars. <laughs> Hey, what was that movie again, Mr. Sharma? Oh, Helen. That was a wrap for episode three. We really mix it up for you this time. We hope you have a wonderful holidays. Remember to get some rest, because I don't know about you, but I definitely need it. And we'll see you next term. Bye. Bye. Where are we going? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you listening to? I'm listening to Donnell. Care. No. <laughs> oh, that document. <laughs> <laughs> test test. Oh, just, just done. Ah. <laughs> oh. has been involved in recent southeast oh. test. Yeah. Get some nice. Get <laughs> 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 oh, Helen. That's a wrap for episode three. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The whisper a bit because uh, one of the teachers are in the right next door. Hey, sir. Oh, so what is the oh. top song you're listening to? <laughs> 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 I don't listen to music, Jason. Oh.